Are you familiar with the iconic TV series The Facts of Life, which graced screens back in 1979? This sitcom revolved around the lives of a group of young women at a boarding school, navigating the trials and tribulations of adolescence under the watchful eye of housemother Mrs. Garrett. An intriguing mix of comedy and heartfelt moments made it a beloved classic for many. While reminiscing about this series, do you have a cherished memory associated with its wholesome charm? Perhaps a particular episode or character left a lasting impression on you. One of the standout features of the facts of life was the inclusion of the seasoned Hollywood actor, Charlotte Ray, whose portrayal of Mrs. Garrett added depth and charisma to the show. Her performance resonated with audiences, solidifying her as a favorite classic Hollywood actor in the series. We're eager to hear about your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this beloved TV series. Feel free to share your stories and memories in the comments below. We'd love to hear them. The TV series The Facts of Life, which aired in 1979, had some interesting behind-the-scenes tidbits. One notable aspect was the involvement of actors with soap opera backgrounds in the show. Blair's parents were played by Nicholas Coster and Marge Dussey, both seasoned soap opera actors. Joss' mother, portrayed by Claire Molly's Calloway, also had experience in the soap opera industry. Another intriguing detail was the turnover of headmasters at Eastland, the school featured in the series. Throughout its run, the school saw four headmasters, Mr. Bradley, Mr. Harris, Mr. Parker, and in the final episode, Blair took on the role. The pilot episode, derived from different strokes, had a headmaster named Mr. Crocker. Additionally, at the outset of the series, Natalie and Blair had to conceal their developing figures by taping down their chests to maintain the appearance of adolescence. This practice, unfortunately common in Hollywood at the time, was referenced by Lisa Welchel, who remarked, the facts of life were not allowed on the facts of life. Similar experiences were shared by other actresses in different productions, indicating a prevalent tradition among young actresses in the industry. These aspects shed light on the various dynamics and challenges faced by the cast and crew during the production of The Facts of Life, adding layers to the show's history beyond its on-screen portrayal. Nancy McKeon's unexpected casting as Joe in The Facts of Life marked a pivotal moment in the show's evolution. In the late 1970s, during a retooling phase, NBC chairman Fred Silverman's quest for a Christy McNichol type led to a chance encounter with McKeon in a Hallmark commercial. Her ability to cry on cue caught the attention of producers seeking a particular essence for the series. McKeon's portrayal of the tough, tomboyish Joe added a distinctive dynamic to the ensemble cast. This unexpected discovery reshaped the show's trajectory, elevating its character dynamics and solidifying its ensemble. The fortuitous encounter became a defining moment in the history of the facts of life, influencing its narrative direction and character development for the duration of its run. In the early days of the 1979 TV series The Facts of Life, a distinctive characteristic set the tone for its first season. As a nod to Norman Lear's sitcom format, the show implemented a pre-recorded clapping segment at the end of its initial segment, mirroring the structure of a play's first act. This ritual, present across Lear's other sitcoms of the time, like different strokes and one day at a time, signified the end of the opening act. However, come 1980, a significant shift occurred across all Lear's series that season. The format was altered, abandoning the pre-recorded clapping practice. This change impacted the show's rhythm and marked a departure from the established norm seen in its early episodes. This shift in structure wasn't the only distinct aspect of the show's beginning. Kim Fields, at the tender age of 10, undertook the role of Tootie, a character scripted to be 12. To enhance her appearance, the decision was made for Tootie to always be clad in roller skates during the show's inaugural year. This creative choice subtly masked the age difference between the actor and the character she portrayed. As the series progressed, significant changes unfolded behind the scenes. Charlotte Ray, who departed from the show in its seventh season, recommended Cloris Leachman as her replacement. Ray and Leachman shared a history dating back to their days as classmates at Northwestern University, where they also roomed together while striving for acting careers in New York City. 
These facets, distinct in their own right, add depth to the intricate evolution of the show, offering insights into its initial formatting decisions and the interpersonal connections influencing casting choices, ultimately shaping the trajectory of the facts of life. The 1979 TV series The Facts of Life had its roots in a spin-off attempt from different strokes. Initially, the premise involved Edna Garrett, the housekeeper, transitioning to become the headmistress at Kimberly Drummond's school. However, after the pilot episode, this concept shifted. Mrs. Garrett stayed on different strokes, and Kimberly's school connection faded. Instead, Mrs. Garrett became the house mother at Eastland, altering the show's trajectory significantly. As the show gained immense popularity over its nine-season run, there were attempts to create spin-offs through six backdoor pilots. These episodes, such as Brian and Sylvia, The Academy, Joss Cousin, The Big Fight, Big Apple Blues, and the series finale The Beginning of the End, and The Beginning of the Beginning, were crafted to explore new narratives. However, none of these attempts resulted in successful spin-offs, leaving the facts of life as a standalone series. A shift in tone occurred when the show moved to the Saturday Night Comedy block, departing from its serious issue-oriented style to embrace a broader, more slapstick-oriented approach akin to shows like The Golden Girls. This change affected the presence of Jerry Jewell, who had previously been a recurring character. Due to the shift in the show's tone towards comedy, she was limited in appearances, causing her to opt out of returning to the series. The attempt to spin off and the tonal shift in the show's evolution contributed distinct elements to the journey of the facts of life, showcasing the challenges and creative decisions that impacted its narrative direction. Mindy Cohn's encounter with Lucille Ball, where Ball remarked on the resemblance between Cohn's Tootie and her own character from a film titled The Facts of Life, provides a fascinating insight into the connections and influences within the entertainment industry. This chance meeting highlighted the interplay between different generations of actors and the acknowledgement of character archetypes that transcend eras. Ball's words of encouragement to Cohn reflect the passing down of wisdom and recognition, reinforcing the impact and legacy of characters like Tootie on television. As we bid adieu, let's embrace the nostalgic embrace of the facts of life. This iconic TV series of the late 70 seconds offered more than mere entertainment. It stitched itself into the fabric of our lives, weaving tales of friendship, growth, and resilience. Now, take a moment to revisit those corridors of Eastland School with its vibrant characters. Did Blair's wit or Tootie's infectious energy resonate with you? Perhaps it was Mrs. Garrett's wisdom that left an indelible mark on your heart. Or maybe it was the camaraderie amongst the girls that mirrored your own friendships. Your journey with the facts of life is unique, and your memories hold the essence of this timeless series. Share your reflections, anecdotes, or cherished moments. Let's celebrate the impact it had on shaping our lives and perceptions. Thank you for taking this reminiscent stroll down memory lane. Your engagement breathes life into the tales we hold dear. Keep the conversations alive and the nostalgia brewing until we meet again. Gratefully, 